I'm Anarchy Ball. Now that that's out of the way, let's do this. Hey, here are five stupid things I've noticed about libertarianism. It's selfish. Libertarianism, like most political philosophies, is an old house with many rooms. For the purposes of this video, I'll be limiting myself to libertarianism as it is most commonly found in American politics today. Consequentialist, capitalist, and individualist in character. The defining characteristic of this form of libertarianism is selfishness. Oh yeah, I remember. It's selfish to want to keep your own money. It's altruistic to want other people's money to be stolen from them and given to you. Duh. Libertarian thinkers and politicians, note the distinction, <laughs> are capable of reciting some very impressive sounding rhetoric about individual liberty and freedom of association, but it all reduces to this. I want to be left alone, and I want things my own way. Oops, Stevie made libertarianism seem appealing. Quick, make a logical fallacy to get out of there. Just think how many resentful five-year-olds are libertarians without even realizing. Good job, Stevie. Everybody knows a five-year-old wants something that's automatically bad. Don't want me to punch you in the throat? You're just like a resentful five-year-old. Don't want me to choke you? Just like a five-year-old. It alienates people from the government. Yes, and when slavery was abolished, that alienated slaves from their masters. Sometimes so far they stop existing. Libertarians have all sorts of ominous sounding ways of referring to the government. The beast, big brother, the state, with the S capitalized to look extra totalitarian. Most, if not all, libertarians view the government as the enemy of the people. It Almost as if it takes people's hard-earned money by force and throws people in cages for breaking arbitrary rules it pulled out of its ass. It's written and spoken of as though it were some malevolent alien that has attached itself to our civilization from whose tentacly clutches we must all constantly struggle to escape. Listen to this, and listen carefully. 80% of prisoners are non-violent offenders. 80% of people in prison shouldn't fucking be there. But the thing is, a constitutional, democratically empowered government, like the one we have in the United States, doesn't have to be the enemy of the people. It can actually be the most powerful and effective tool of the people. Let me read the manual for this tool. Place a piece of paper with the name of a politician you think will be least shit. Hope against all hope that this politician will keep his promises. Cry as he doesn't. Repeat. The government is about as effective as a tool as the people as your erect two-incher is a weapon in a fencing match. Unfortunately, most politicians with libertarian leanings seem like they would rather sabotage the government than work to make it better and more effective. When there's a machine that feeds you shit, the only way to make it better is by stopping it, not by adding spices to the shit. Which is really shitty to those of us who agree with Abraham Lincoln on the whole of, by, and for the people thing. Matches and axes are made out of wood, but I doubt they're a forest's friend. When you're given the right to violate a person and property at will and use it, you become fundamentally different from the people that aren't, even if you initially were a normal person. It's anachronistic. Most of the major expansions and reforms of government that libertarians resent and wish to dismantle, the Federal Reserve, Social Security, Medicare, the Civil Rights Act, the Americans with Disabilities Act, etc., were brought about because there was a recognized need for them. Brilliant. The government is infallible. Every time the government does something, it's because there was a need for it. The war in Iraq. The government did it, so there was a need for that. Guantanamo Bay. The government did it, so there was a need for that. Segregation. States put in those laws because there was a need for them. Everything that the government does is because they have a divine plan. Societies grow and evolve. What's true just doesn't grow and evolve. Murder was bad 10,000 years ago. It's bad today, and it'll be bad in 10,000 years as well. Rape was bad 10,000 years ago, it's bad today, and it'll be bad in 10,000 years. Fuck your current year bullshit. If you have a leg to stand on why moral principles should be broken by a tiny minority of people, make an argument or shut it. And so do the needs and interests of their members. Even so, many libertarians often express a desire to roll things back to how they were once upon a time. In some cases, all the way back to the day of the founding fathers. 
And this is perfectly understandable as I see it because you would have to go back that far to find a point in American history where their ideas would have formed the basis of a sound political system <laughs> rather than a failed and useless ideology. It puts on airs. I'm an atheist and I know as well as anyone that we can be some condescending bastards. Please take a second and pause the video so you can read the meme that he has up. Then after you're done reading it, unpause it and then continue the video. Let's look at Stevie's little meme first. Charity doesn't have to lift people out of poverty on their own. Capitalism does the biggest part of the job. See this shit, Stevie? That's a worker driving a car. If you had told him a few years earlier that he'd be doing that, he'd laugh in your face. The car was after all the sign of ultimate decadent luxury, and so was the camera you made this on, and the computer you edited this on. Tell me, how many bleeding heart liberals would get off their asses and give to charity if they stopped scratching their balls thinking the government will take care of it? When we want to be. But let me tell you something, when it comes to intolerable smugness, an atheist has got nothing on a libertarian. Unless the atheist in question happens to be a libertarian, which is not uncommon. Look, the point is this. Many libertarian politicians and commentators like to cultivate this image of intellectual superiority for themselves and their political philosophies. Unlike, say, liberals... <laughs> non-libertarian conservatives, a libertarian roots his ideals firmly in the soil of reason. Libertarians are not swayed by appeals to emotions. They care not for what is popular or fashionable or empathetic or humane or fair or... This is what the left-wingers think make all the difference. Emotion. We care. We care. If you have ever cared Okay, listen to this. You have appendicitis. You can choose two people to operate on you. Your mother that loves you deeply or a surgeon that couldn't give less of a shit about anyone but himself. Which one do you choose? Even if your claim is true that we don't care about the poor, that means nothing. Also, we do care about the poor. Look, you get the idea. The point is, they're above all that. Which brings me to the last stupid thing I'll mention about libertarianism. It's naive. I'm going to give you a second to read the meme he has up. Again, first of all, Stevie's little meme. It's just basic regurgitation of the bullshit public schools put in his head. Yeah, compared to us, workers in the 19th century had shit lives. That's a stupid point of comparison. Any era looks shit compared to ours, and hopefully ours will look shit compared to our children's. What you actually have to look at is the trend. Did lives improve? Yes, without a doubt. But that was because of my government. No, sorry, the U.S. was one of the last countries to participate in that bullshit and still had the most well-off workers. Yes, besides being outdated and buffoonishly pompous, libertarianism is also inescapably naive, since it assumes that, given maximum personal and economic freedom, individuals would just sort of work out an ideal or at least improved society. An assumption far easier to make than to assume that a tiny minority who can violate people's rights at the will will do the same. For themselves. Never mind that democratic government represents an attempt to do exactly that sort of thing. Yes, people engaging in voluntary transactions is exactly the same as putting it in the name of the tyrant you dislike the least in the box, and hoping he screws you just as little as promised. Suppose not everyone in this minimally governed free market society was all that ethical. Suppose, and I know this is hard to imagine, but bear with me, that those with the most wealth and resources decided that their private interests were more important than those of other individuals or of society as a whole. You get more money in capitalism by being the best at serving others and thus getting their money. Unless you throw the capitalism part down a flight of stairs and bring in the government to exclude competition and give you free money in the form of subsidies. 
Libertarians will often caricature government in exactly this way, describing it as the powerful living off of the power less with no concern for the welfare of those they exploit. And yet, the alternative that libertarians propose to this, which in their bitterness over having been born as members of a social species... Us being a social species is a justification for society, not the government that feeds on it. Yet almost always, status confuse the two. You getting together with your buddies to drink a beer is society. It's a consequence of being a social species. The government then taking money from you because they disapprove of your behavior or outright ban it isn't. They perceive as tyranny at the hands of government is something that amounts to tyranny at the hands of unaccountable magnates. Give me money and I'll give you stuff. Mind pointing out where the tyranny is? Because I don't see it. Minimum government, maximum freedom. To those who can afford it. Freedom is free. You're thinking of free stuff. Something completely different. If you doubt me, go to jail and ask the prisoners how much stuff they have and how much freedom they have. And there's nothing wrong with wanting stuff. The best way to get it is to get out of people's way so they can produce it for you. The hardest part is only picking five. No, actually, the hardest part was listening to all your bullshit. Catch you next time.